that, it's my great uh, honor to now give the floor to Ms. N Nadia Murad. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you as well to Ambassador Woodward and to the United Kingdom for organizing this important debate as one of your signature events and for inviting me to brief today. Ladies, gentlemen, and dear friends, we are gathered at a moment of global instability, a moment shaped by pandemic, war, and a climate crisis. In times like this, issues that affect women and girls, issues like conflict-related sexual violence tend to be pushed aside, as though they are somehow secondary to the real issues. But the truth is, these are precisely the moments when protecting, supporting, and investing in women and girls should be urgent priorities. For every setback our societies face, women and girls are forced 10 steps back. This is particularly true in times of conflict. History shows that whenever armed conflict erupts anywhere in the world, rape and brutality follow. We are seeing this in Ukraine as we speak, with reports of sexual violence that should alarm us all. Sexual violence is not a side effect of conflict. It is a tactic of war as old as time. Groups like ISIS understand the destabilizing effect of gender-based violence, and so must we. ISIS began targeting my Yazidi community in 2014. Thousands of Yazidis were massacred. Others fled on foot, facing thirst, starvation, and blistering temperatures. In addition to the murders, ISIS captured more than 6,000 Yazidi women and children. Women and girls like me, my nieces, and my sisters were sold and raped. Those of us who survived were considered lucky. But the nightmare continues even now, eight years later, for more than 2,800 women and children who are still living in captivity and sexual violence at the hands of ISIS. We are here today to discuss accountability not only in the aftermath of conflict-related sexual violence, but importantly, as a tool to prevent such violence from occurring in the first place. In particular, these are, there are three aspects of accountability I would like to highlight. Justice, support for survivors, and a commitment to gender equity in the long term. The pursuit of justice is one of the most visible forms of accountability. Last year, a German court convicted an ISIS member of genocide. It was the first time this had ever happened anywhere in the world. This historic verdict is an important step. But standing before you today, my question is, what next? ISIS led a systemic campaign of sexual violence to destroy Yazidi women and the Yazidi community. The United, Nation, the United Nations has condemned their actions as genocide. UNITAD has collected reams of evidence 
documenting the atrocities ISIS committed against women and girls. And other terrorist groups and oppressive regimes have watched as ISIS members openly brag about enslaving Yazidi women and girls while facing few, if any, consequences on the world stage. As survivors of sexual violence, it is not easy for us to tell our stories. But we do it to prevent what happened to us from happening to others. We are called brave, but the courage we really want to see is from leaders in a position to do something, whether they are heads of state, member states here at the UN, or corporate leaders, we need more than moral outrage. We need action. To those of you assembled in this chamber, now is your moment to put ISIS on trials for genocide and sexual violence. Send the case to the International Criminal Court or establish a hybrid court by treaty to prosecute ISIS crimes. In the meantime, other nations should follow Germany's example and use the principle of universal jurisdiction to try war criminals for the atrocities they commit, including sexual violence. These trials must proceed with transparency for survivors who deserve their day in court. What message it will send if you let perpetrators of sexual violence continue to enjoy immunity? If you want to establish deterrence, if you want to assure Yazidi women and survivors everywhere that you stand with us, do not delay justice anymore. We have the evidence. All we need is the political will. Accountability means that those who perpetrate violence should face consequences for their actions. But it cannot stop there. Victims are not to blame for sexual violence, yet too often, we are left to piece our lives back together on our own, abandoned by the government and the international communities that felt in their mandate to protect the basic human rights of all people. Survivors need solidarity and tangible support to empower them and provide a path to recovery. Reparations and recognition are an essential part of justice. That is why I have co-founded the Global Survivors Fund with my friend and colleague, Dr. Dennis McQuaggy, to provide interim reparations to survivors of conflict-related sexual violence. After all, to survivors, reparations are not some theoretical idea or a topic for legal debate. They are the difference between going hungry and having enough food to put on the table, between sustaining lifelong injuries and accessing reproductive health care, between being cast out of our communities and being able to put a, a roof over our heads. Through this project, we want survivors to know that we stand with them and they are not alone. Eight years after ISIS genocide, survivors who returned to Sinjar are still struggling to recover in the face of political disputes between Baghdad and Erbil with militia groups vying for control of our homeland. The UN Security Council should send a special envoy to end the suffering of Yazidis in Iraq. 
Member states have a moral responsibility not to abandon genocide survivors. This brings me to my third point. Every time a new conflict, every time we see a new conflict, there is an outpouring of thoughts and prayer. But as I know from personal experience, a few days or even a week in the news cycle does nothing to address the systemic challenges women face. This is true from Iraq to Ethiopia, to the Democratic Republic of Congo, to Ukraine, to conflict zones everywhere. It is not enough to talk about accountability and prevention in times of crisis. We need long-term commitments to advancing global gender equity because gender equity is key to democracy. That means combating gender bias and stereotypes everywhere they occur, in homes and families, as well as in our education system. And it means recognizing that what is true in times of conflict is true in times of peace. If we want strong, stable communities, we must listen to women. To be very clear, when I say listen to women, I do not mean this in some abstract way. I mean that policymakers should leave the halls of power and go out into affected communities and ask women what they need. One solution will not work for everyone. Throughout the world, different socioeconomic and political circumstances impact women's rights. Compounding factors such as race, religion, class, and access to healthcare, education, and employment require different solutions. Survivors know best what they need to heal and recover, so why not ask them? At Nadia's initiative, the organization I founded, we see every day that the most effective work is community-led, survivor-centered, and takes a holistic approach. The work that is being done to help survivors must be done hand in hand with them. It is not just the act of listening that matters. How you listen, the way you communicate with survivors, and what you do with the information you collect, all of these things matter too. Documenting sexual violence is crucial for accountability and prevention. But too often, survivors who speak out face shame, stigma, and lack of transparency about how our testimonies will or will not be used or the likely outcomes. That is why I look forward to joining Lord Ahmed tomorrow to officially announce the Murad Code, a set of guidelines intended, intended to change norms around how journalists, investigators, and anyone tasked with documenting and investigating conflict-related sexual violence interacts with survivors. These guidelines were shaped by feedback from survivors around the globe and aim to promote greater respect, understanding, transparency, and healing. In conclusion, accountability can be a crucial component of prevention, but only if it includes meaningful justice. The services and support survivors need and the ultimate goal of advancing global gender equity. Each of you in this room has the power to make this a reality only 
if you choose to act. Everywhere I go, I meet survivors of sexual violence who are bravely telling their stories in the face of stigma, shame, and even physical danger. If women who have suffered such immense loss and incredible pain can find the strength to not only rebuild our lives, but help our families, communities, and entire countries, surely the rest of the world can find the strength to take meaningful steps to end sexual violence in conflict. As survivors, we look to you, the leaders in this room, to act with the same courage we have shown. Survivors do not want pity. We want justice. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. I thank, on behalf of all of us, Ms. Nadia Murad for her deep insights and her continuing courage and strength on this important issue. Thank you, Ms. Murad, for your briefing.